All right, welcome back here to Clay and Buck. It is All-Star Day here at the RNC, and we have another one of our All-Stars. Alina Haba is with us now. She is one of President Trump's attorneys. You know her from trying to defend the president against the layers of lawfare that have been dropped on him uh, in recent recent uh, months, going back now over a year. Years. Yeah, years. I was going to say, it's a lot. There's a lot of it. Um, let's start with this. We, we had the the almost surreal feeling yesterday when the news dropped that the South Florida case had just been dismissed by a judge, which we had been told, oh, my gosh, people are going to prison. And, you know, we never believed that. But the point is, that wasn't even the top, top news story because of what happened over the weekend. But Jack Smith, it seems, has just missed entirely in Florida and not going to be able to get it done in D.C. Are you surprised by what a catastrophe this guy is? No. Um... I mean, we can start at the beginning. Who the hell is he and why was he put in this position? And that's why he lost. I mean, start from the very, very beginning. You can't pick a henchman. You can't say go and do so before the election without the American people catching it and without the clear uh, demonstration of partisan politics and lawfare coming into our country. It's as a lawyer, I've said it a hundred times, but um, it's embarrassing for my profession what he did, and uh, and I think that Merrick Garland and the Biden administration has become so desperate and sloppy that these are falling one after another like dominoes. Did you? When did you think that it was clear that it was backfiring? Like at, at what point in this process politically? The backfiring? indictments, the raid, r the raid. Right, you, right away, you the thought Mar-a-Lago raid. They've gone too far. The raid. Far. I was with the president when the raid happened. And we were in New York, and it's funny, and I, I'm going to speak about this, but it, it's funny, the way he is so resilient, and it's just another day for him, in that moment, I was like, this is sick. This is actually waste. When I signed up to be his lawyer, <laughs> there was nothing in, you don't go to law school prepared for corruption and to fight the deep state. You just don't. And um, I have learned so quickly uh, under him, frankly, uh, how to be more resilient and how to be stronger and how to fight back and fight back with words and the truth. And the truth is the truth is on our side here. We have history. We have logs, White House logs that we've seen. I've been on trial and been told while on trial, oh, we just found out that Miss James visited the White House a month before she filed her complaint and spoke with Kamala. She went to her apartment, you know, things like that. You can't make it up. And it comes out. Eventually it comes out L and it's Letitia, deteriorating. Letitia James of New yeah, York, the state attorney Tish. general who went after and ran. Yeah, you guys are must be tight <laughs> and ran on a platform of going getting after Trump. Trump. Sorry, Clay, go ahead. No, I was just going to say as a lawyer as well, when I look at what's going on in New York. Yeah, I can't imagine wanting to be a lawyer in New York and wanting to run a business in New York, leaving aside right. Trump. When you see all that. How destructive is it not only to the failure related to Trump, but also just the legal system in general, where there have to be a lot of people with prominent assets, corporations, where mm -hmm. they look at what happened to Trump and they said, if they can do this to him, which is why I think this is such a compelling argument, they can do it to anyone. For sure. How ultimately is it destructive to the whole system of law in New York? I think if you look at statistics... If you look at the crime rates that have gone up that they're ignoring because they have literally tied up all the courts with getting after Trump, the citizens of New York are suffering as a result of their political animus and their political drive. And that drive is blinding to the radical left. And when you have a DA and an AG who similarly have had one mission, and that mission is not to help New York, it's not to clean it up, it's not to keep it safe, but it's this fakeness. We are seeing a rush of people leaving New York, fleeing to Florida, going to Texas, going to places they feel they will not be persecuted and prosecuted because they're a registered Republican. Or maybe they just don't want, exactly. I've been a registered- I'm, I'm, one, I'm one of them. I'm a, a former New Yorker who's now a Floridian. Yeah, and look, I practice in New York. I work in New York and I'm afraid. And I'm, and I'm not gonna lie to you, especially with my job. You don't think I'm a target? I, I was gonna say, I, I, mean, I bet you've had legal friends, advisors, mentors who have said to you, you know they're going to come after your law license 100%. at some point, right? Yeah. yeah, they already are trying. Um, and the truth is I do everything ethically. I do everything that I'm supposed to do. But they attack me because I have a strong voice and because I'm a voice for Trump. And that's not going to deter me from doing my job and, and trying to save America through the legal system and making sure that, frankly, Americans know 
what is actually happening in the back. You're speaking on Thursday. I am. That's a big undertaking. Yes. I believe you're leading into Tucker. Yes. What is it like to draft a speech? Yeah. I imagine that's challenging. How much more challenging was it after what you saw on Saturday? Have you altered what you would say? Take us into what the process of writing a speech for that big of an audience is like, for that big of a moment, and then also to have to pivot given what just happened over the weekend. Sure. Uh, so when I was asked to speak, I spoke with the president, and <clears throat> I assumed that my speech would be much like what I've spoken about for three years, uh, the lawfare, the, all of that, and that's not what I was asked to speak to. Um, I've been asked to speak about him and who he is, and I'm honored, and it's also more daunting for me because it's really the underbelly of what goes on and who I've been friends with for the last few years and who's made me who I am. Um, I had a speech prepared. This speech was thrown out <laughs> after Saturday. This morning, I actually rewrote my speech from scratch and uh, I cried every time I read it. And I'm struggling to get through it without tears, to be honest. And I'm worried that I won't be able to on Thursday night. But also, I feel that the American people don't know President Trump the way I do. And I'm so honored to be one of those people that gets to be with him a lot and, and tell them who he is. OK, so this is important. It sounds like what you're going to be talking about. My wife is also a lawyer. She said what she hears from her girlfriends who might not be willing to vote for Trump, suburban moms, is, oh, he's a misogynist. Yeah. He's not a guy that I could trust. That's what they say. Yeah. And she says, I wish strong women would tell the story, like you, of what being with Trump is like. Is that a part of what you yes. will do? And for everybody out there listening to us right now who might be like my wife and have girlfriends that they're trying to persuade yeah, other moms out there. Yeah, how can you say you work for him? Yes. He's this, he's that. He does this to women. Look I'm at sure the comments. I'm sure you hear it, too, in New York well, from women course. that you know. So I, how I would mean, you I've walked in New York and had people scream at me, you're a disgrace. Um, you're an embarrassment to women. You are this, that, and the other. I think I'm a champion of women, and I think President Trump is. And I know he is. And uh, that's what I'm going to speak to, yeah. I think that could be a killer speech because yeah. I think there's a lot of people respect from me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, now I'm excited to, to actually be Alina Haba, not President Trump's attorney on Thursday. Well, Alina Haba, President Trump's attorney, thank you for being here with <laughs> us. You. We appreciate you making the time. It was really good to see you. And, and also for stepping up and being in the fight. I mean, we've been seeing you do that for a long time before you uh, came on the show. So Thanks. it means a lot. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm honored. Thank good you. Good luck Thursday. Thank you. Uh, you know, it takes a really confident executive to ask his company to intentionally reduce his salary to just a dollar a year because he wants to make a point. But that's what Porter Stansbury did. He's the CEO of a very profitable financial research company, somebody I've known for a decade, and he's incredibly brilliant. He knows business. He knows the markets. And he wants to teach you about something, a better way to get compensated. That's why he's getting paid a dollar a year, because there's another form of compensation, a new form of money in America that he says, if you understand, can make you very rich. Every American is legally entitled to use this not so well-known currency, but few know much about it. Porter is hoping to change that. It's critical you understand how America's new money works. Check out Porter's latest detailed presentation online at secretcurrency2024.com. You won't see this opportunity discussed anywhere else. Go to secretcurrency2024.com, secretcurrency2024.com.